Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today, I hope you're all doing well. This is the Old Testament in 88 days, we're on day 26, and today is the first day of Judges. We'll be reading Judges 1 through 8, and uh, we'll be learning about all the Judges in Israel. So, let's go ahead and get started here. Judges 1-1. One, one. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked Yahweh, saying, Who shall go up for a us against the Canaanites first to fight against them. And Yahweh said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said to Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. And Judah went up, and, the, and Yahweh delivered the Canaanites and the Pezrites into their hand, and they slew them in Bezek. Ten thousand men. And they fought Adoni Bezek and Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Pezerites. But Adoni Bezek fled, and they pursued after him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. And Adoni Bezek said, Three score and ten kings, having their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table, as I have done. So Elohim hath requited, requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there he died. Now the children of Judah had fought against Jerusalem, and had taken it, and smitten it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. And afterward the children of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites that dwelt in the mountain, and in the south, and in the valley. And Judah went against the Canaanites that dwelt in Hebron, now the name of Hebron, before was Kerjatharba, and they slew Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai. And from thence he went against the inhabitants of Debir, and the name of Debir was Kerjath Sefer. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kerjath Sefer, and taketh it, to him will I give Akas, my daughter to wife. And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter to wife. And it came to pass when she came to him that she moved him to ask of her father a field, and she lighted from off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a south land, give me also springs of water. And Caleb gave her the upper springs and the nether springs, and the children of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up out of the city of palm trees with the children of Judah into the wilderness of Judah, which lieth in the south of Arad, and they went and dwelt among the people. And Judah went with Simeon his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephath, and utterly destroyed it, and the name of that city was called Hormah. And Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof, and Ascalon with the coast thereof, and Ekron with the coast thereof. And Yahweh was with Judah, and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. And they gave Hebron unto Caleb, as Moses said, and he expelled thence the three sons of Anak. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. In the house of Joseph they also went up against Bethel, and Yahweh was with them. And the house of Joseph sent to describe Bethel. Now the name of the city before was Luz. And the spies saw a man to come forth out of the city, and they said unto him, Show us, we pray thee, the entrance into the city, and we will show thee mercy. And when he showed them them the entrance into the city, they smote the city with the edge of the sword, but they let go of the man and all his family. A man went into the land of the Hittites and built a city and called the name thereof Luz, which is the name thereof unto this day. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shean and her towns, nor Tanakh and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Iblim and her towns, nor the inhabitants of Megiddo and her towns. But the Canaanites would dwell in that land. And it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Neither did Zebulun drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahalol, but the Canaanites dwelt among them and became tributaries. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Akko, nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor of Alab, nor of Akzib, nor of Helba, nor of Afik, nor of Rehob. 
But the Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Beth But he dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Beth Anath became tributaries unto them. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountain, for they would not suffer them to come down to the valley. The Amorites would dwell in Mount Heres, in Aijalon, and in Shalbim, yet the hand of the house of Joseph prevailed so that they became tributaries, and the coast of the Amorites was from the going up to Akrabim, from the rock and upward. Judges 2 And an angel of Yahweh came up from Gilgal to Bochim, and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt, and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land, but ye shall throw down their altars. But ye have not obeyed my voice, why have ye done this? Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass, when the angel of Yahweh spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept, and they called the name of that place Bochim, and they sacrificed there unto Yahweh. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went, every man unto his inheritance, to possess the land. And the people served Yahweh all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of Yahweh that he did for Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Yahweh, died, being a hundred and ten years old. And they burned him, buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Heres, in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not Yahweh, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and served to Balim. And they forsook Yahweh, Elohim of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked Yahweh to anger. And they forsook Yahweh, and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of Yahweh was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them, and, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of Yahweh was against them for evil, as Yahweh had said, and as Yahweh had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, Yahweh raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they would went a whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of Yahweh, but they did not so. And when Yahweh raised them up judges, then Yahweh was with the judge, and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For repented Yahweh because of their groanings, by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass, when the judge was dead, that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers, in following other gods to serve them, and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. And the anger of Yahweh was hot against Israel, and he said, Because that this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of Yahweh to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore Yahweh left those nations, without driving them out hastily, neither delivered them into the hand of Joshua. Judges 3 Now these are the nations which Yahweh left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least, such as before knew nothing thereof, namely the five lords of the Philistines and all of the Canaanites and the Sidonians, Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of Yahweh, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. And the children of Israel dwelt 
among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Pezzarites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to their sons, and served their gods. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and forgot Yahweh, their Elohim, and served Balim and, and the groves. Therefore the anger of Yahweh was hot against Israel. And he sold them into the hand of Cushanat Rish Athaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cushanan Rishathaim eight years. And when the children of Israel cried unto Yahweh, Yahweh raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel the son of Canaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the spirit of Yahweh came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war. And Yahweh delivered Cushanan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into the hand, his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cushan Rishathaim. And the land had rest forty years, and Othaniel the son of Canaz died. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of Yahweh. And Yahweh strengthened Eglon the king of Moab against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of Yahweh. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek, and went and smote Israel, and possessed the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon the king of Moab eighteen years. But when the children of Israel cried unto Yahweh, Yahweh raised them up a deliverer, Ehud the son of Gerud, a Benjaminite, a man left-handed, and by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon the king of Moab. But Ehud made him a dagger, which had two edges, of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. And he brought the present unto Eglon king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. When he had made an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. But he himself turned again from the quarries that were by Gilgal, and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king, who said, Keep silence, and all that stood by him went out from him. And Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting in a summer parlor which he had for himself alone, and Ehud said, I have a message from Elohim unto thee, and he arose out of his seat. And Ehud put forth his left hand, and took, out, uh, took the dagger from his right thigh, and thrust it into his belly. And the haft also went in after the blade, so the fat closed upon the blade, so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly, and the dirt came out. And Ehud went forth through the porch, and shut the doors of the parlor upon him, and locked them. And when he was gone out, his servants came. And when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked, they said, Surely he covereth his feet in the summer chamber. They tarried till they were ashamed, and behold, he opened not the doors of the parlor. Therefore they took a key and opened them, and behold, their lord was fallen down dead on the earth. And Ehud escaped while they tarried, and passed beyond the quarries, and escaped unto the Sarath. And it came to pass when he was come, that he blew a trumpet in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them. And he said unto them, Follow after me, for Yahweh hath delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him, and took the fords of Jordan toward Moab, and suffered not a man to pass over. And they slew of Moab at that time about ten thousand men, all lusty and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest fourscore years. And after him was Shagmar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines six hundred men with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. This is four. The children of Israel again did evil in the sight of Yahweh when Ehud was dead. And Yahweh sold them into the hand of Jabin, the king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Haroseth, of the Gentiles, and the children of Israel cried unto Yahweh, for he had nine hundred chariots of iron, in twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time, and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment, and she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinom, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not Yahweh Elohim of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun? And I will draw thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. 
And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor, for Yahweh shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh, and he went up with ten thousand men at his feet, and Deborah went with them. Now Heber the Canaanite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites, and pitched his tent unto the plain of Zanaim, which is by Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak the son of Abinoam was gone up to Mount Tabor, and Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even nine hundred chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him, from Harosheth of the Gentiles unto the river Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which Yahweh hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not Yahweh gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor, and ten thousand men after him. And Yahweh discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his host with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host unto Harosheth of the Gentiles, and all the host of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. Abiat Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jeel, the wife of Heber the Canaanite, for the, there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jeel went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in unto me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here that thou shalt say no? Then Jael Heber's wife took a nail of the tent, and took a hammer in her hand, and went softly unto him, and smote the nail into his temples, and fastened it to the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. Behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him, and said unto him, Come, and I will show you the man whom thou seekest. And when they when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So Elohim subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin the king of Canaan until they had destroyed Jabin king of Canaan. Judges 5 Then sang Deborah and Barak the son of Abinoam on that day, saying, Praise ye Yahweh, the avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto Yahweh. I will sing praise to Yahweh, Elohim of Israel. Yahweh, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped water, the mountains melted before Yahweh, even that Sinai from before Yahweh, Elohim of Israel. In the days of Shagmar the son of Anath, in the days of Jeel, and the highways were unoccupied, and the travelers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased, they ceased in Israel, until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. They choose new gods. When I was in war in the gates, was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel, that offer themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye Yahweh. Speak that ye ride on white asses, ye, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of Yahweh, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his village in Israel. Then shall the people of Yahweh go down to the gates, Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. Yahweh made me have dominion over the mighty. Out of a frame was there a root of them against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin among thy people, out of Machir, came down governors, and out to Zebulun, they that handle the pen of the writer. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even Issachar, and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great thoughts of heart. 
Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds to hear the bleatings of the flocks? For the divisions of Reuben there were great searchings of heart. Galid abode beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeopardized and jeoparded their lives unto the death of the high places in the field. The kings came and fought, and the, then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo, and they took no gain of money. They fought from heaven, the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. The river of Kishon swept them away, that ancient river, the river Kishon. O oh, my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Then were their horse hoofs broken by means of prancings, and prancings of their mighty ones. Curse ye Meraz, said the angel of Yahweh. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of Yahweh, to the help of Yahweh against the enemy. Blessed above women shall Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked water, and she gave him milk. She brought forth butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the nail, and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer she smote Sisera. She smote off his head when he had pierced, when she had pierced and stricken through his temples. At her feet he bowed, he fell, he lay down. At her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. The mother of Sisera looked out a window and cried through the lattice, why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Her wise ladies answered, Yea, she returned, answered to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey to every man, a damsel or two, to Sisera, a prey of diverse colors, a prey of diverse, uh, of diverse colors of needlework, of diverse colors of needlework of both sides? Meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. So let all thine enemies perish, O Yahweh, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. And the land had rest forty years. Judges 6 And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahweh. And Yahweh delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years, and the hand of Midian prevailed against the children of Israel, against Israel, because the Midianites. The children of Israel made them de the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midians came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. For they came up with their cattle in their tents and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto Yahweh. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto Yahweh because of the Midianites, that Yahweh sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drove out them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am Yahweh your Elohim, fear not other gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not believed, obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of Yahweh and sat under the oak which was in Afra that pertained unto Joash the Az Az Abizarite and his son Gideon brushed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him and said unto him, Yahweh was, is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if Yahweh be with us, then why why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not Yahweh bring us up from Egypt? But now Yahweh hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And Yahweh looked upon him and said, Go and Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And Yahweh said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. 
Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes of an ephan of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him unto the oak, and presented it. And the angel of Elohim said unto him, Take the flesh and of the unleavened cakes, and lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of Yahweh put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there arose up fire out of the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of Yahweh departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of Yahweh, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord Elohim, for because I have seen an angel of Yahweh face to face, and Yahweh said to him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto Yahweh, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Elbezerites. And it came to pass the same night that Yahweh said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years, and throw down the altar of Baal that, is, that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it, and build an altar unto Yahweh thy Elohim upon the top of this rock in the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as Yahweh had said unto him, and so it was, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. And when the men of the city rose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and the grove was cut down that was by it, and the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who hath done this thing? And when they had inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, hath done this thing. Then the men of the city said to Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will you plead for Baal? Will you save him? He that will he that will plead for him, let him be put to death whilst yet it is yet morning. If he be a god, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. Therefore on that day he called him Jerubal, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he hath thrown down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the spirit of Yahweh came upon Gideon, and he believed a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him, and he sent messengers unto Asher and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet them. And Gideon said unto Elohim, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, it shall be dry upon all the earth beside them, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. And it was so, for he rose up early in the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto Elohim, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak this but once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon the ground let there be dew. And Elohim did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. Judges 7 Then Jerubal, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And Yahweh said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go, proclaim to the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Goed. And there returned to the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. Yahweh said to Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that whom of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people into the water, 
and Yahweh said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down, boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lappeth, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And Yahweh said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped, I will save, and delivered the Midianites into thine hand. And hast let all the other people go, every man, unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent, and retained those three hundred men, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass the same night that Yahweh said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delighted it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, thou go thou with Phura, thy servant, down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thine hand be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Phura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and came over a tent, unto a tent, and smote it, it fell, and overturned it, that the tent lay along. And his servant fellow answered, and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, the man of Israel. For into his hand hath Elohim delivered Midian, and all the host. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and he returned into the host of Israel, and said, Arise, for Yahweh hath delivered you into your hand the host of Midian. And he delivered the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps with, within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when it come, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so ye shall do. When I blow with a trumpet, and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say the sword of Yahweh and of Gideon. So Gideon and the three and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch and they had a, a but, had but newly set the watch and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands and the three companies blew their trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets and in their right hands to blow with all and they cried the sword of Yahweh and of Gideon and they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host ran and cried and fled. And Yahweh and, and three hundred blew trumpets, and Yahweh set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Beth Shittah in Zerarath, and to the border of Abel Meholah, unto Tabath. The men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali, and out of Asher, out of all Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, and to take before them the waters unto Beth Barah in Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Beth Barah in Jordan. And they took the two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb. They were slew in Oreb upon the rock Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb, and pursued Midian, and brought the hands, heads of Orab and Zeb to Gideon on the other side, Jordan. Judges 8 And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast thou served us thus, that thou callest us not when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites? And they did chide with him sharply. And he said to them, What have I done now in comparison of you? It is, is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abiezer? Elohim hath delivered into your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb. And what was I able to do in comparison of you? Then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he and the three hundred men that were with him, faint yet pursuing them. And he said unto the men of Succoth, Give, I pray you, 
loaves of bread unto the people that follow me, for they be faint, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmunna, kings of Midian. And the princes of Succoth said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in thine head, that we should give bread unto thine enemy? And Gideon said, Therefore, when Yahweh hath delivered Zeba and Zalmunna into mine hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with the briars. And he went up thence to Penuel, and spake unto them likewise, and said to the men of Penuel, Answered him, as the men of Succoth had answered him. And he spake also unto the men of Penuel, saying, When I am come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmunna were in Kakor, and their host with them, about fifteen thousand men, all that were left of the hosts of the children of the east, for there fell a hundred and twenty thousand men that drew sword. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwelt in the tents on the east of Noba and Jagbeha, and smote the host, for the host was secure. And when Zeba and Zalmunna fled, he pursued after them and took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmunna, and discomfited all the host. And Gideon the sons of Joash returned from the battle before the sun was up, and caught a young man of the men of Succoth and inquired of him, and he described unto him the princes of Succoth and the elders thereof, even threescore and seventeen men. And he came unto the men of Succoth and said, Behold Zeba and Zalmunna, with whom ye did upbraid me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in thine hand, that we should give bread unto thy men that are weary? And he took the elders of the city, and thorns of the wilderness, and briars, and with them he taught the men of Succoth. And he beat down the tower of Penuel, and slew the men of the city. Then said he unto Zeba and Zalmunna, What manner of men were they whom ye slew at Tabor? And they answered, As thou art, so were they. Each one resembled the children of a king. And he said, They were my brethren, even the sons of my mother, as Yahweh liveth. If ye had saved them alive, I would not slay you. And he said unto Jether his firstborn, Up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. And Zeba and Zalmunna said, Rise thou, and fall upon us. For as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon rose, and slew Zeba and Zalmunna, and took away the ornaments that were on their camel's neck. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. And Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. Yahweh shall rule over you. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey, for they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, We will willingly give them, and they will spread a garment, and did cast there in every man the earrings of his prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seventeen hundred shekels of gold, beside ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and beside the chains that were about their camel's necks. Gideon made an ephod thereof, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And all Israel went thither a whoring after it, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so they lifted up their heads no more. And the country was in quietness forty years in the days of Gideon. And Jerubal, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in his own house. And Gideon had three score and ten sons of his body begotten, for he had many wives, and his concubine that was in Shechem. She also bare him a son whose name is called Abimelech. And Gideon the son of Josh died in a good old age, and was buried in the sepulcher of Josh his father, and Ophrah of the Abizarites. And it came to pass as soon as Gideon was dead. The children of Israel turned again, and went to whoring after Balim, and made Barbareth their god. And the children of Israel remembered not Yahweh their Elohim, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jerubal, namely Gideon, according to all that the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. Ah, oh, man. If you guys haven't noticed, the start of Judges is pretty much the downfall. Right after Joshua died, they, they I don't know how, but after Joshua and all the older people of that generation died off, they totally forgot about God, which I don't understand how. Like, wouldn't the parents have taught their kids 
and told their kids all the stories and all the wonderful things. It's like, how do they forget? So this, that, I mean, Judges literally is the start of the downfall of Israel. Because from here on in, out, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And as you can see, every time, um, you know, one of the judges dies, they go back to sinning so much. And uh, it's just sad. It's really sad. And it's kind of disgusting, too, to read. Um, you know, nobody's perfect, so I'm not putting myself above these people. We all sin, but it's just reading it is just disgusting. Because if you look into what these uh, these gods, little g, that they were worshiping, that was not the one true god, Elohim. They were like sacrificing people and kids and the fire and just horrible things that I don't even want to get into. But anyway, it's just sick stuff. And what else is interesting is every time an, a judge saves the people at that time, it seems like it's been 40 years, the year, 40 years of rest. That's, I mean, that's the, that's the common theme. They defeat the enemy, have 40 years of rest, a judge dies, and then they go back to sinning again. So, and then here, down here, we read that not only did they go back to sinning, but they treated uh, Gideon's family, the house of Gideon, Gideon's family, they treated like, uh, they did not treat uh, treat him well. Yeah, neither showed they kindness. So they don't, they didn't show kindness to the one who actually saved them. Like, ah, uh, just to put salt in the wound that they already did. That's just like a, that's just a punch in the face to to God, Elohim, as he used Gideon to save them. For forty years they had peace, and they go back to doing what they they've been doing. It's just sad. Let's just leave it at that. It's going to get worse from here on out. So, it, there's a lesson to be learned here by reading this. We don't want to make the same mistakes as uh, the people in the past. We need to learn from other people's mistakes rather than making our own mistakes and pain and suffering the consequences of our own mistakes when we can easily learn from others. So, that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. As always, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care, God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in Him, trust in Him, and continue to wait on Him, and you'll never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow with the rest of Judges. God willingly, that is. Um, actually, no. Not the rest of Judges, but we will be continuing Judges. So, Anyway, thanks again. See you later.